Hey everyone, how's it going? It's me, it's Korzak. Welcome back to part 4 of the Dark Cloud 2 walkthrough. So, we uh, covered how to invent in the last episode. In this episode, we are continuing off in the story. We are also going to get every missable scoop in chapter 1. I'm going to leave timestamps uh, either in the description or I'll make a content kind of linking you over to when we're going to get the picture and how to get it. Um, for the people who are just here for the pictures and uh, for the story, the rest of the video is here. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. I've done it, Cedric. Oh boy, I knew you had it in you. So, you think you understand the invention process now? Yes. From now on, you gotta use your own noggin, find your own building blocks, and make your own new stuff. Got it? There's still lots of building blocks hidden in this town, and I'm sure you'll find lots of new stuff wherever your travels take you. Keep your eyes open, you hear? I will. I'm really gonna pull out all the stops next time. That's a spirit, Sonny. Now then, why don't we finish up with Steve? Okay, now Steve can handle longer battles. It's time to go get him, son. Max, when you think you're ready, just give me a holler. You all set? Okay, let's go! All right, time to saddle up and head out. This door leads to the underground waterway. You'll be heading out on your own, son. I'm gonna see if I can't get something out of need. Loud and clear. Keep your guard up. Leave it to me. You were thrilled when you thought you were alone here. Too bad. So sad. <laughs> Tear them to pieces, my little Linda. Okay, so as soon as this starts, be ready to get off of the ride pod by hitting R3, and be ready to just kind of immediately hit square and take a picture. Boom. And that's how you get that picture right there. So, if that does not work for you, something else you can do is kind of try and go behind the guy. Just, I don't know, do that. It'll kind of turn around and get up onto its back legs and kind of do that roar thing. And just kind of spam square and you should get the brave little Linda photo. Alright, so, never delete these ideas. Never delete a scoop, okay? Well, I mean, I have three photos, so I don't, I don't, need, the, I don't need the three, so I'll get rid of the extras. But we have this photo here. We need to show this to Donnie later on for, um... It's just uh, something that's required for inventing. Or uh, not inventing, it's for uh, leveling up your photography level and getting rewards for... for doing so. It's also needed for one of the trophies in the game. After that, after you get the photo, just hop on Steve and beat the elephant up and you win. Take that! 
I won't forget this! The outside world. Right then, my heart was filled with expectation, wondering what kind of places I would find. I had no idea that the incredible adventure I was about to begin was beyond anything that I could have imagined. So Cedric will usually uh, fix everything on the ride pod for free. You just kind of have to do it properly. Uh, basically, you just kind of go talk to him wherever he is and he'll repair the robot parts for you. Cedric! All right, Mead. What exactly are you hiding from me? Tell me everything you know. Mm. Mm, I see. So you realize too, have you? Damn. But sometimes it's better not to know. <clears throat> Why are you hiding things from me? I thought we were friends, Need. What's going on? Spit it out, will ya? Okay, okay. I can't go on hiding it anymore. I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you what's going on here in this town, in this world. That's gonna have to wait until uh, we progress a little bit further in the dungeon. But it's time for a nice little save up. So there are some scoops to get in these floors. We aren't going to do it now because I'm going to have an episode uh, showing off every single picture to get in the uh, entire uh, chapter one. The whole episode one. So that'll probably be episode five or six or something. Uh, so let me just look at this for a sec. This was the one for where... Yeah, so I need to attack and defeat everything with just using Steve. A.K.A. the Ride Pod. So you may notice that Steve's HP actually goes down slowly over time. He's at... Yeah, he just went down to 66. So I try to travel on Max. And not him. Basically, it's just so his HP doesn't slowly go down until he's kind of just done. Okay, cool, that makes things a little bit easier. However, I've made the mistake for where I'm reading the dialogue and I overpress X and then I do a normal attack with Max. So just be careful and be patient so that you don't uh, accidentally attack when you're opening a chest. We also have Mimics now. Usually in the second half of floors you'll encounter Mimics. Some chests are just going to attack you. A lot of RPGs have Mimics, so it's not really anything New, I'm not going to over explain it. Max is also faster than the ride pod, right now anyway. Um, later on, you can uh, actually change the legs that Steve has, and he can become significantly faster. He's actually how uh, the time challenge becomes significantly easier in a lot of the early game levels, because he moves so quickly, 
and he'll knock enemies out in one hit. He's pretty much the best way to get the two minute clears in this place later on in the game. Okay, I almost attacked right there. Luckily I did not. Got a mimic. <laughs> he wasn't very strong. <laughs> Okay, that's just the exit, so we are not going over there yet. Looks like we have uh, three enemies here. Oh. That is a deadly combination. Oh no, it's just two. Oh, no, it is three. Okay. It's not good to get hit by the bat, but there's worse things to get hit by. So something that does kind of suck about controlling Steve is uh, take a look at his weapon damage. Every hit will always take two. Well, every melee hit will usually take two. And when, and uh, repair powder will always only restore half of his weapon hit points, unfortunately. So using exclusively Steve can be a real drain on resources. However, sometimes you really need his damage. Also, don't break crates with Steve if you're trying to uh, get things done uh, for a metal. Like he'll he'll just kick the crate, for example, or he'll crick the rock, kick the rock in later levels. But just don't do it. I, I've had times where it didn't matter and I did it, and there was no problem with getting the metal. And then there were other levels where kicking the crate did count, and I had to redo the level. It, I, it's kind of weird. So it's better to just not kick them. Although once he gets his legs that make him move faster, you won't even have the option to do anything about them anyway. I'm gonna get off of Steve. <laughs> uh, always explosion. Nice. See, if I didn't pick explosion there, then the chest would have blown up and I would have lost what's at whatever's inside. Maybe it's not that big of a deal because it was just scrap metal this time, but it could be an indestructible coin, which is an expensive item we need for getting John Donnie to join our party later. Or it could just be some helpful weapon or some crystals or something, just something helpful to have. There isn't really anything in the chests that are particularly useless in this game. Maybe two items, like uh, this. Eh, not really, that's used a bit too. But like the poison and the unknown bones aren't really helpful for much. They're, it's kind of just filler items, but like 99% of things are useful to have in this game. Night Stalkers, huh? I don't think I want to meet any of these things in real life. Some floating thing with a sharp coat and hucking fireballs that just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> you can skip this cutscene, by the way. I've always found Steez quite boring. It's just a zoom up of his face. But yeah, we got our medal. So once you get the medal, you can do whatever you want. You can break this crate. And you can do it on max, too. <laughs> we are going to go talk to Cedric and have him fix up Steve. I don't think he'll repair our weapons quite yet. They do that, uh, he'll do that in chapter two. You can like make him join your party as a third, as a third character. And uh, the, he, a lot of characters that you can have join your party will um, kind of just do stuff for you. Like one will make you bombs, one will help you get more drops, and then Cedric will repair your gear. Uh, he's not really one you take into a dungeon with you, though. 
but uh, you can kind of use him out of a dungeon so you don't have to use mats. So, there it is. That's what this is all about. You expect me to believe all that? So just what do you plan on doing, huh? Well, there's nothing that I can do. You ignoramus! What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be the mayor of this town. Uh, you're right, I'm useless as mayor. Come on, Need, what happened? You didn't used to be like this. Mm. Gosh darn it, Need, I just can't believe you. That's it! Need, just start the Blackstone Railroad again. Blackstone Railroad? The reason you shut down the Blackstone Railroad was so that no one could leave and see the outside world, right? Well, that's not necessary anymore. Now we need to leave this town and see the outside world. If we do, then we just might find a way around this. Hmm. Come on. Right, let's reopen the railroad. That's also a scene that would crash the game occasionally on PS2. Everything set? All set, Cedric. It's a go! Great to be back, isn't it, sir? Yeah, 20% more cold today. Roger that. Alrighty, Blackstone 1. Here we go. I didn't have the guts. I'm counting on you, Cedric. <laughs> that guy does kind of seem like a pushover, so yes. Now here's the part that's never made sense to me. <laughs> Cedric left on the train, but uh, guess where we're going? Back to his shop, and he'll be there waiting for us. <laughs> There's also some loot for us right here to pick up. Boom. So if you say, uh, dig for a scoop. Basically, I just showed Donnie my picture of Linda. If you ask him to be your friend, it doesn't do anything right now. You have to wait until later. Okay, so there's another one here, which is potato pie. And there's one last one. Ah, uh, so I have to finish the last level actually, but there's another chest there, which will have another fruit of Eden. Oh well. Anyway, let's just talk to Cedric quickly. Boom. Free refill. <laughs> so I don't recommend buying this stuff yet. But you do want to get Steve as much XP as you can. So I do usually try to exclusively play with him in these last two levels. Uh, just because there's a couple items that you really want to have for uh, the next episode in general. So it's good to just kind of get them early and then you don't have to worry about anything. I think you only need like 700 experience points for it. 
because like it's two items. You can actually invent one of them if you really want to, but I, I usually just buy it. So we just need to complete this level without healing. Oh, we got a ride pod fuel. That right there is a good reason on why you should uh, destroy these crates. Because ride pod fuel is a pretty rare item, and it's expensive, and it's really good to have. For in case Steve goes down, you really want to have the option of bringing him back up. Because he is a very strong ally. This might be obvious, but since Max is the one who drives Steve, when we get Monica in our party... Um, if the ride pod, if Max goes down, you can still play Monica, but you cannot play Steve, even though his HP is full, because Max is the one who drives the ride pod. Gun repair powder. I I, I really like the um, the final level music. It's uh, cool. I think it sets the mood. Although it is the same for every dungeon in the game, which does make it kind of boring because like level one is supposed to feel as epic as level seven or eight. I don't think so, but it is still cool.
Okay, so we are gonna leave and go pick up the final fruit of Eden. We're gonna teleport out to uh, save three seconds because time is money, friend. <laughs> Well, I mean, that is true, but time is just also precious. There we go. I'm not going to use them right now, but yeah, we have it. Time for a new save. Oh yeah, we can. That's cool. <laughs> so basically, we actually have like 26 saves. 26 save slots. Uh, so yeah. Underground channel. It's time for the bass fight. The channel reservoir. It should be around here somewhere. What's that? <laughs> Shall I put a stop to this game of tag we've been playing? There he is! Here we go! It's showtime! <gasps> now, be a good boy and hand over that red stone. Otherwise, you're gonna make Mr. Flotsam very, very angry. So angry, he might even kill you! Don't you get it? I told you once, I'm not handing this stone over. Just give it up already. Ooh, I wouldn't cop that attitude with me if I were you. You'll live to regret it! Mm. He doesn't even do anything, just his toy. Anyway, make sure to uh, run away from this guy to start. There is a scoop. All you have to do is wait for him to fire a rocket out of his eye and take a picture of it right away. And that is how you get it. We will do this one more time just to show you guys, since this guy will most likely fire a missile a missile again if we can get the camera angle to work that would be great okay I'm gonna eat something I don't want to game over all right I would just have Steve kind of throw some punches into this guy you can actually take this guy out in one full turn, but there's a reason on why I will not, and you'll see soon. So this guy will run away. He might fire a rocket, or there we go. He lets out enemies after he receives some damage. These enemies are weak against your gun, and it's a one it's a missable enemy that is only available at this time in the game. So if you want to max out your bestiary, do it. And they also give you a lot of XP. <laughs> like, uh, that's basically a full gun level right there. And they're pretty easy to take out. Okay, so he's gonna, like, jump down, fall down, like, right on top of you. Alright, he might fire a missile. No. Just kind of run away from him until he shoots a missile out of his eye. And he will eventually do it. You can always just get further away from him. Just always be ready to take a picture. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. So basically the second he opens his eyes, just start spamming square and you'll get your picture. Okay, so we don't need two copies. Nice. And that is all the missable scoops in episode one. So let's beat this guy now. Just wait for him to throw another nose bomb at us or maybe let's just step back a bit. Boom. I've never had my I've never been able to do damage with my gun, only, it seems like only the wrench will actually do damage to him. Oh, oh, my poor little Halloween! It's okay! You can still move! Stand up! Hurry now! Could that be the way out? What a glorious view, although I think it looks better in the daytime. was the first time I had seen it. The sky that reached so far away, so far above, the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. But I was yet to realize that great changes were happening in the world. What you think? You surprised? The Blackstone Railroad's back and ready for action. We're gonna see the world on this baby. Max, we got quite an adventure ahead of us. Hop on so we can hit the road. Listen up, Max. This is what I found out from Need. 
His story was pretty far-fetched. It was 15 years ago. Something terrible happened in the world. What exactly happened? You don't need this letter to tell you that, do you, Mother? Listening to Cedric's story, at first I was surprised. But as I listened, I slowly started to understand exactly what it was that was happening around me. Fifteen years ago, the world was laid to waste, and all that remained was the town of Palm Brinks. Our enemy, the one who destroyed everything, was a mysterious ruler. His name? Emperor Griffin. We still don't know why he did this, why he destroyed our world. The reason that he did not also destroy Palm Brinks was because of a stone he believed was hidden in our town. Yes, the stone I'm wearing right now. Griffin's henchmen, Flotsam, threatened the mayor and made him search for the stone. And that's why, when he found out that I had it, he wanted to catch me so badly. The world laid to waste, the elusive overlord Emperor Griffin, and the strange stone that everyone seemed to want. With this mysterious puzzle, my adventure began. What the? It came from outside! Max, that ladder there leads to the roof of the train. Go check it out. Gotcha! So there are actually a couple pictures inside the train to get, but we are going to grab them later. They aren't re they aren't really missable. I mean, you kind of lose access to them at the end of chapter 5, but then you regain access at the start of chapter 8, but we're just going to count them as chapter 2 pictures. So they'll be in my chapter 2 picture guide. I think, I think this fight is better when it's nighttime, though. If you throw it too far, it won't hit him. And you cannot hit him twice in the same jump, no matter how close it may look. So I hit him on this side, I have to hit him one more time on the other side, no matter what. He's really easy, though. It's on fire! Do something, you worthless lump! Why, yay, Yoda! This doesn't look good, Max. He's gonna blow himself up along with this whole train. What? <laughs> Lob another one of those bombs at me! Come on now! Do it! Oh no. Hey, mister! Don't you ever give up. You're starting to look pretty pathetic. What's this? Another little brat? 
Those are some bad tan lines. Actually, no, it's not a tan line. It's his makeup. Oh, I see. So you want to die too? Sure, why not? Let's go, punk. It's time to burn. The master swordsman. <laughs> well, something like that. So that was how I met Monica. Even though it was the first time we'd met, I felt like I'd known her for a long time. Eventually, in the middle of the forest, the train couldn't go any further. Gonna take some work to move that one. That's fine with me. I've got things to do here. This place is the spirit forest in Dane. But it's different than in my time. Monica came from the future. She came to this time to do something very important. That's what she told me. Time travel was possible. It's crazy, but this was only the beginning of our unbelievable adventure. The real surprises were still ahead of us. If we could restore the Great Elder's origin point, he could tell us who Griffin really is. The origin point? An origin point is where something begins. Like a flower, you first have to plant the seed in the soil before it will bloom. In that case, the action of planting the seed is the origin point of the flower. In that way, the flower is the history that springs from the origin point. In the same way, all things that happen in the future have their origin point in the past. But if that origin point is changed, the results can be terrible. And that's what Griffin has done. Griffin has sent his henchmen to this time, altering the origin points of my time. And now he is rewriting history as he sees fit. In my time, this forest was where the Elder of the Spirits, Jurak, lived. He was very wise and powerful. His great power purified the forest and gave vitality to all the living things in it. But Griffin erased Jurak from existence. And not only Jurak, all those with the power to challenge Griffin are being erased from existence too. I don't think he'll stop until he's wiped out the entire world. So, someone has to stop him. Even now, my comrades are fighting Griffin in the future. And Max, I need you to help us. Huh? Me? <laughs> yes, you have to. Uh... Okay, I'll do it. All right, I knew you would. Guess we're a team now, right? And with that, Monica joined my adventure. An adventure to take back the true past, the true history that had been stolen by Emperor Griffin. 
Chapter 2 Resurrection of the Great Elder Let's start with Sindane. Sindane? Max, you go on without me. I'll just stay here and work on getting Blackstone running again. If you need my help, just holler. Hey, Max, we're gonna have to work hard to shift this boulder. Bring back anything good you find in the forest. Make sure you let us know if you need a hand. Okay, take care of yourself, Max. And you do, little girly pie. It's so cringy. You bet. Okay, let's go. I never liked hearing that. That's so cringy. Monica actually moves faster than Max. <laughs> Just a little tip there. So if we add Cedric to the party, we can then have him um, repair our weapons. And we can just send him back to the train and his uh, gauge will start to slowly go back up over time again after we say go run a dungeon or something. So make sure you bring this guy into your party and make bombs. And then just get rid of him. And now we're going to bring Borneo with us. And he'll make it so he can get more drops from monsters. So we'll just keep him in our party. all by itself. That's kind of weird. Let's check it out. Yeah. Someone's there. Wow. Ah. What is it? What do you two want? Hey, you're from the Furbit tribe of Sindane, aren't you? It's so cute, all curly and everything. Hey! Hey! That's right. There's something I want to ask you, okay? You... you... this is how you ask a favor? Oh, sorry. Oh! 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 Have you heard of a being here named Jurak? <laughs> he is angry. I wonder why he got so mad. Yeah. Nobody's home. I hear the Furbits are crazy about grape juice. And we brought all this grape juice, too. Now what are we gonna do? If he won't let us in, I guess we'll just have to throw it away. Come in! Hey, it worked! <laughs> Nothing like lying your way in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want the grape juice, huh? Well, it'll cost you. 
Hmm, let's see. I've heard you furbits have a mysterious magical power to make things like houses and plants. What are you getting at? I want you to use that power to help us. Help you? You probably know there's something strange going on. The whole world has become like one big deserted island. Everything's disappeared. At this rate, there won't be anything left in the future. I want you to use your building power to rebuild a town in this time. No way! It's too much work! Besides, we got no time for that, so just run along now, will ya? What do you mean you don't have time for that? <laughs> Even if I told you, it wouldn't change a thing. Hold on, Rococo. <gasps> okay, you two, I think I understand. Come on over here and have a seat. The name's Conda. This here's Rococo. And this is Tobo. Pleased to meet you. So, who might you two be? I'm Monica. I'm Max. Nice to meet you. You know there's something wrong with the world, right? A great darkness is trying to distort the flow of time. Hmm. I was beginning to wonder about what was happening to our forest. Of course, I'd like to help out, but... To be honest, we're in a bit of a fix ourselves. Even if we wanted to, we can't help you till we solve our own problems. What's wrong? Tell us about it. Hmm. It's a long story, but... It must have been about a year ago or so. One day, a beautiful woman got lost and wandered in here. We don't like humans too much, so we approached her carefully. Humans are crafty, cunning creatures. That's how we've always thought of you. But this woman was different, she was. Her soul was more beautiful than words can describe. Said her name was Holly. I had a feeling that wasn't her real name, but that didn't matter a bit. During the few days and weeks she was with us, she wove a sort of spell over us all. She had us in the palm of her hand. Then, one day after the blue, something happened. Holly left to search for food and just disappeared into the forest, never to return. A few days went by and still no Holly. We were so sad. It was like our hearts had been broken into a million little pieces. There was no way we could go on without her. In those few short weeks, she had become an essential part of our lives. She was part of us all. So we formed a search party to search for Holly. A party of four set out for Rainbow Butterfly Wood, where she disappeared that day. But those far haven't come back yet, either. I was sure I'd pick the most able-bodied of our tribe, but they turned out to be a bunch of goofs. So, basically, at this point in time, I'm afraid we can't help you two out. You want us to use our special powers to help you, but the thing is, all seven of us have to be here in order for it to work. Besides, we're really not in a helping mood. I'm pretty sure you understand. That's quite a story. Mm. I have a proposition to make. I bet I can guess. You want us to go into the woods and find your four friends, right? You mean you'll help us? Could you also keep an eye out for Holly? Each day without her brings us nothing but gloom. I understand. Four or five, what's the difference? So what does this Holly look like anyway? Any special features? Special features, let me see. 
Must have been something. Um, uh, ah, her hair. It was long. I think. No, wait. Maybe it was short. I think. Wait, that's it. The potato pies used to make were the greatest. That's right. They were mighty tasty. Yeah, incredible. Huh, <sighs> forget it. Potato pie? That reminded me of the potato pies you made for me when I was a kid. They were so warm, eating them would always cheer me up. The most delicious potato pies in the whole world. Could it be the holly that the Furbids talked about was actually you, Mother? Just thinking that made my heart beat faster. This was the other reason that I wanted to see the world, so that I could find you again, Mother. Even though the world had been laid waste, I had a feeling that you were out there, somewhere. It's just beyond here. Lately there seem to be some nasty monsters living in these parts. Watch yourselves now. Legend has it that in these woods lives a mysterious rainbow-colored butterfly. And anyone who lays eyes upon that butterfly never leaves the woods again. You know, I wonder if Holly and the search party we sent out went and accidentally found themselves that rainbow butterfly. Just be careful not to run into that rainbow butterfly. What do you mean, be careful? What could we possibly do to prevent it? If that happens... If that happens? Just pretend you didn't see it. <laughs> That's always funny. <laughs> huh? Well, whatever. Okay, we're off. Oh, take this with you, boy. What's this? It's a bottle of wine. I mean, uh, it's a bottle of grape it's juice. might smell you and come running. Okay, I got you. Thanks, Conda. Good. I'll be here waiting for you. I wish you good luck. Alrighty. So we are going to leave it here for this episode, so I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good day, and we'll see you soon. Bye.